The songwriter went on down to say, It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. I, I need to tell you that the revelation of God's love toward us, it is awesome this morning. Amen. God loves you. Amen. He loves you in such a way, amen, that nothing is able to break the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. John wrote, he said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not God, uh, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in is love. Are you living in Jesus Christ this morning? The Word of God says, if you're living in Him, then here it is love. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, amen, you know the love of God. Amen. May we be acutely aware of the love of God this morning because we live in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God says that God uh, loved us, uh, that He sent His Son to be the propitiation for sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and the love of God is perfected in us. Let me say, if you love God this morning, and God loves you, and you've been born in Him, then you have no reason to be spiteful toward anybody. That's right, Brother Sadell. Amen. Amen. If you love God, you have no reason to be spiteful toward anyone. Amen. Amen. Love will break the chains that nothing else can break. 1 Corinthians 13 says this, Charity suffered long and is kind, and charity envieth not. Charity bondeth not itself, it's not puffed up, it does not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, it is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Amen. Love will carry loads that no other emotion will do. And that's why we have to stay connected to love this morning. Amen. 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 Knowing that we are loved of God and we have to love one another. Amen. Amen. It's important. Amen. And so the Word of God says, uh, uh, For now we see through a good glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known of God, and now abide in faith, hope, and charity, and the, uh, these, three, uh, uh, th these three, and the greatest of these is charity. Amen. When we don't understand anything that happens in life, the greatest thing that we need to know is that God loves us and we need to keep on loving God. Amen. Amen. We see through our glass darkly. We don't always understand everything about life, what's happening to us, our surroundings. But one thing for sure is we need to be confident that we are loved of God and that we love God and that we love others. Amen. When all else fails, God, let there be love that is standing in my life. Amen. Uh, one day we're going to know God as well as He knows us. He loves us. Amen. And we are going to see Him someday if we keep ourselves in the love of God and we love Him and we love others. The Bible says that love rejoiceth in the truth. If you love Jesus, you love truth. Amen. Amen. The Word of God says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way and the truth and the life. Amen. If we love Jesus, we will love Him and the truth of who He is, that our life is in His hands, and that there's nothing that will separate us from the love of God. You know, Satan will try to separate you from the love of God, and Satan will try to separate you from truth. He'll tell you that God doesn't love you. He'll tell you that God is not concerned for you. He'll tell you that what you're going through is because God has it out for you. Amen. Sometimes we can be angry at the things of life, but we better never be angry at God and hate God because of what's happening. That's right. 
There are certain things about life we don't like. We don't like sickness. We don't like death. We don't like separation. We don't like war. We don't like difficulty. But one thing that's for sure, we better love God in spite of it all. Knowing that He loves us. And so, Paul poses this question, who shall separate us from the love of God? And the first thing he says is, shall tribulation. What is tribulation? It's a state of anguish or pain that tests one's resiliency or character. How many likes your resiliency to be tested? I like to be resilient and bounce back. But I don't like for it to be tested. I don't like for my character to be tested. None of us like that. And so tribulation does that to us. Amen. Uh, uh, none of us like pain. None of us like difficulty. Amen. But one thing that is certain, that even though we go through tribulation, that it cannot separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. He says, who shall tribulation or distress? That state of physically or mentally suffering uh, is what uh, distress is. Care, anxiety, or worry. 1 Samuel uh, uh, 36 says this about David. It says, And David was greatly distressed. For the people, they spoke about stoning him. How would you like to be stoned to death? I wouldn't like that. The Bible says that here was King David. He loved God. And the people were talking about stoning him. If you get the word that the people are thinking about stoning you, taking your life, hurting you, uh, can you imagine the anxiety, the worry, the physical uh, anguish that would come from that? But, but, but obviously, the mental anguish that comes before that. But the Bible says that David did this. That David encouraged himself in the Lord. I want to ask you this morning, are you going through physical anguish? Are you going through mental anguish or emotional anguish? I need to encourage you this morning by telling you that God loves you and even those things cannot separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So be like David and find a quiet place, find a separated place and encourage yourself in the Lord. If you only hear people's voices, you will be distressed. But when you hear the voice of God, you will be encouraged. And sometimes you need to get away from your own voice because we can roll things around and around and around in our mind that aren't healthy for us, that aren't spiritually encouraging for us, that makes us feel abandoned or separated from God. So what we need to do is remind ourselves of the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And encourage ourselves. Amen. Forget about all the other voices and hear the voice of truth this morning and the voice of truth is Jesus Christ that he loves you amen and nothing shall separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord and that is truth amen, amen. amen. the rest is rubbish the rest is distress the rest is tribulation amen encourage yourself in the Lord and hear the voice of of truth. 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 6 through 9 says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God may uh, not, not be of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not. Distressed. We are the vessel full of the excellency of Jesus Christ. We're troubled on every side. Yet, Sister Susan, we're not distressed. You know why? Because we know the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It may happen on the outside, but on the inside, Sister Tina, we're confident that nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not tribulation, not distress. Amen. He said, you are yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So that brings us to the next 
thing that Paul said. He said not only are we in tribulation or distress, but he said persecution. That excruciating uh, punishment, torture, or hell. But he said we are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. You may say, well, it's so Bill, I feel like I'm being persecuted. I feel like I'm being forsaken. Well, there's a lot of things that we can feel in life, but just because we feel it doesn't mean that it's real. I, well, the truth is this. You may feel it. You feel like this is the way it is, but the truth said that's your feelings. This is the facts, and this is the truth that you are persecuted, but you're uh, not forsaken. You're cast down, but you're not destroyed. Uh, 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 Hebrews says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. In the middle of your day, in the middle of your dark, dark night of the soul, in the middle of whatever you're going through in life, you may feel this way, but the truth is, God is always with you. He will not forsake you. Nothing will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Just because God allows things to come into our life, God understands that He has a purpose and a plan and a will for our life. And He knows allowing these things to come into our life will mold us and make us and shape us into the vessel that He wants us to be. We will then become a greater mirror of the love of God as God's love is reflected through us. He goes on down to say, not only tribulation, distress, persecution, but He says famine. And that is when there is a shortage of food. Probably none of us have really ever went through that. And then you come to uh, nakedness. That's where there is no clothing. None of us have ever probably been to a place where we don't have any clothing. So if you look at that, you will say when you combine nakedness and famine together, you'll say that things are scarce. Uh, that there is a ration or there is not much of them. But the Word of God reminds us in Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 25 through verse number 27. He says, Take no thought of what of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, or, what, or, 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 or yet for your body, uh, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. You know what Jesus was saying? He was saying this, Sister Jan. He said, don't you be concerned thinking that God doesn't love you when you don't have food on the table or you don't have clothes to put on your body. Do not think that God cannot take care of you. The birds don't go and sow seeds and, and make sure that they produce. And then do they reap them and take them into a barn? They, they don't do that. But does not God take care of the fowl of the air? Let me tell you, my friend, you are greater than the birds of the air. Amen. You've been created after the image of God. God sent His only begotten Son to die for you. Amen. And when you experience salvation, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And if God will take care of the mere birds of the air, how much more will He take care of you? Don't feel like you're separated from God when your bank account isn't great or maybe there's not lavish fruit on your table or fancy clothes to wear. Amen. God will take care of you. Even in scarce places, you are not separated from the love of God, even if it feels like it. Get rid of your feelings and accept the truth of God's Word that He loves you unconditionally. Amen. How powerful is that? Amen. Amen. That God loves you this morning. I told you to imagine at the beginning of service, amen, rekindling the fires of love. Amen. When you read the Word of God, how can we not help but rekindle the fire of love for Jesus Christ? Because He loves us. So, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness. The, then next He talks about peril. You know, exposing to possible harm or loss or injury, danger, risk, hazard. If you read in Acts chapter number 15, you'll see that men, they hazard their life, life for Jesus Christ. 
But Christ has challenged us that if we were to lose our life, we would fight it. Let me ask you this morning, have you lost your life in Christ? Or is the challenge of losing your life for Jesus Christ too much of a risk? When we know the unconditional love of God, there will be no risk or hazard to giving it all for Christ because we know we're loved. And then he said, sword. Really, we think about that in our mind, we think about how that a sword would be more of war and fighting and we think about being a warrior. However, the context of what's being said here is not a sword as in war, but it is a sword as in even if government opposes you, you will still stand for Christ because God loves you. Amen. Now, we've never ever lived in such a country where we have to hide ourselves to come and to worship God. We have never been persecuted in such a way that if we share our faith for Jesus Christ that our family could be taken from us or we could be tortured. But there may be a day. And God's Word already gives us the authority that even when authority above us can punish or hurt us, the love of God is so strong and real. And even if we suffer persecution or die by the sword, nothing will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I will. Paul said, not that I speak in respect of one, but I have learned that in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and everything I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Do you know this morning about the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord that whatsoever state that we are in there with we learn to be content. You know why? Because nothing separates us from the love of God. Can I ask you this morning, what state are you in? Maybe it's a new state, maybe it's a place where you are being abased rather than abounding, or maybe you're struggling with abounding. Are you persuaded that nothing will separate you from the love of God? which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's time this morning for the church to be persuaded of the love of God. I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself, being persuaded of the love of God that nothing will separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing in our past, however, if your past is not under the blood, it can't separate you. Nothing in our present and nothing in our future can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing. And so I'm challenging you this morning to get everything in your past underneath the blood of Jesus Christ and have the truth of God's love revealed to you. That in this present moment that you understand that should you walk out of here and get the most devastating news of your life, amen, you know that the love of God still abounds towards you and nothing separates you even when you feel like this world is coming to an end, even when happiness seems to, to, to be far from you, even when fulfillment seems to be lacking, amen, I want you to know that nothing 
nothing here in the present, nor the past, nor the future can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I read a story as I was preparing for this message of a man who was talking about his wife suffering a severe asthma attack. She was young, however, her asthma attack just began to deplete her body. And as it depleted her body, it was a long, strenuous road for her family as they watched her suffer and then die. Her husband wrote of everyone who was such a part of her medical care. He mentioned just tens upon tens of people by name. As they participated, whether it was a doctor, whether it was a nurse, whether it was a, 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 a personal caregiver, whether it was a custodian, he mentioned everyone by name. And his friend said, how is it that you can mention everyone by name uh, when you were going through this agonizing time? He said, well, let me tell you, when I walked in the room and I got the news that my wife was not going to be able to live, that, that this disease had attacked her body and she was breaking down and dying, he said, I remember the one who came in when I was broken and I was crying and they were acting like an invisible force because they didn't want to break my time of grieving and being with my wife. He said, I remember the doctors by name as they come in and gently help me. And they, I watched the, the PCAs as, as, as they pulled my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law up out of the chair and cared for them as they watched their daughter die. And as they found out that my dad, my father-in-law was a doctor and they brought him in on the care. He said, I remember the moments they asked me to step out of the room and then I come back in the room and I noticed my wife was over to the side and they said, would you like to lay in the bed with your wife one more time and he said I laid there and I caressed her face and I loved on her in the final moments of my life how can I not forget the ones who, who, who made such a, a vast difference in my life to share with the last moments of life with my love do you know what we are those people in this church when we make a way for others to love God. Amen. We are the people in this church when we look at Jesus Christ who's made a way for us to experience love and care for us so diligently and with every detail in mind. How can we ever forget Jesus Christ? And yet sometimes in the struggle of life, we think that He's abandoned us. Now He's working all the details out. For a love to be distracted. He's walking it out in your life. And so you may feel like things on the outside are coming against you. But nothing can run away the certainty of the love of God, which is set on the inside. I just want to challenge you one more time when I'm closing. Church, it's time that we become personally of the love of God. That nothing will ever separate us, the child of God, from the love of God all right. This morning, without any further ado, can I open up these altars? Can I ask you to get around? Amen. And say, God, I don't want to ride that feeling. But once again, you get the truth of your love toward me. That you love me unconditionally. And nothing will separate me from your love. Will you get around this morning to be persuaded of the love? Would you be 
persuaded of the love of God. And the plan and purpose of God, what He allows into your life, it's because He loves you. And He's working His will in you. Amen. No matter what the enemy brings against you, he can war on the outside. He can try to twist and take God's truth. But the truth is God loves you. And nothing will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Be persuaded of the love of God. Thank you. 